Hello students, welcome to our read aloud. We've been learning about George Washington and an interesting fact that some students have mentioned is something to do with his teeth. And that's what our story today uh, is about. Here we go. George Washington's teeth. And on the front, I see Washington. I see people dressed obviously in like from colonial times. I also see a hippo with its mouth wide open. Hmm. And on the back, I see a set of false teeth. Here we go. George Washington's Teeth. Written by Deborah Chandra and Madeline Gamora. Pictures by Brock Cole. And if I look closely in around the edge of the title page, I can see some illustration some drawings of portraits remember a portrait is like a painting of a person I recognize some of these portraits from some of the biographies that we've read about George Washington and here's some other interesting tools hmm wow Ooh, are those some more false teeth wow I wonder if those are colonial times dentists tools here we go Oh, there's a little note we should read before we start. All of his life, George Washington had problems with his teeth and worked hard to save them. This story is based on what really happened to George Washington and his teeth. Okay, so there he's on his horse. Here we go. The Revolutionary War George hoped would soon be won, but another battle with his teeth had only just begun. Oh, so I guess he's riding off maybe to a battle and there he is. And he's already kind of holding his mouth. George Washington rushed into town. The dentist heard his shout. Hold still, he said, then gave a yank. A rotten tooth popped out. Ouch. All that night, George tossed and moaned. Another tooth was sore. But at the dawn, he saddled up and galloped off to war. Are you noticing something about the sound of the book? It's rhyming, right? Okay, here we go. So even though he's been tossing and turning all night, he's got to get off to war. Ooh. George reached New York as British ships invaded every port, preparing for a fierce attack. His soldiers built a fort. Inside, he rubbed his swollen gums with soothing oil of myrrh until a sentinel cried out, Here come the British, sir! Charging on the field, George thought, There's something in my mouth. He spat into his handkerchief. Another tooth came out. This can't be happening, George gasped. What if someone should see? If word got out I'm losing teeth, my men would laugh at me. While no one looked, he wrote a note his dentist would receive. Please come, it said. I'll need your help when I get home on leave. Oh, and here he is at the dentist. Back at home, George lost more teeth till he had only ten. Oh, Martha, dear, George cried, I fear I'll never eat again. She fed him mush and pickled tripe, but when guests came to dine, he sneaked one of his favorite nuts. Then he had only nine. Uh-oh, so he was having soft stuff, but then he snuck a nut, which he likes, and uh-oh, not a good idea. So he's down to only nine teeth in his whole mouth. Oh, that's from a very famous, right, portrait, a uh, painting of George Washington crossing the Delaware. George crossed the icy Delaware with nine teeth in his mouth. In that cold and pitchy dark, two more teeth came out. Snow fell on George at Valley Forge. His blue coat hung in tatters. By then he'd only seven teeth that couldn't even chatter. Yet bravely George led forth his men, coat and pigtail flying. While cannons boomed, he held his jaw and groaned, I think I'm dying. 
The Redcoats fled. George won the war. When he returned alive, Martha checked for seven teeth, but counted only five. Wow, he had lost some more. And the Redcoats are the British. Maybe you've noticed in some of the books how they're always wearing those red uniforms. He hid the evening of her ball, ashamed his friends would see. That night, the dentist came again. George lost another three. Poor George had two teeth in his mouth the day the votes came in. The people had a president, but one afraid to grin. Oh, he's even afraid to smile or open his mouth because he only has two teeth left. A portrait artist came to George. He said, I know a trick. I'll pad your mouth with cotton balls to puff your sunken lips. George stood up to have a look. He fell back on his fanny. It doesn't look like me, he roared. It looks like Martha's granny. He yanked the cotton from his mouth, then gasped. What have I done? The cotton held a rotten tooth. Now George had only one. So if you notice, you know, our teeth really impact the shape of our mouth, what our mouths look like. And if you don't have any teeth, your lips really sink in. So to do his painting, to do the portrait, the artist said, let's stuff some stuff in there, right? So that it looks like your teeth are there. But then George pulled out the cotton and pulled out another tooth. George still had that tooth the night. A knock came at the door. I've brought false teeth, the dentist called teeth that won't get sore. George put them in, but when he smiled, spring snapped against his tongue. Out flew those teeth. Ag! George shrieked, they've knocked out my last one. There, the false teeth go flying with his last tooth. Oh no, George moaned, I'm toothless. He kept his mouth shut tight. He couldn't sleep. He paced the floor and prayed with all his might. If only I had teeth thought George. He pondered what to do. Aha, he cried. All my old teeth might help make something new. He searched Mount Vernon's bed chambers, the pantry, parlors, halls, through shelves, desk drawers, the musty floor of every horse's stall. He's looking everywhere for what, for what, his old teeth. George found no teeth. Alas, they're gone. A great sob shook his shoulders. Through tears, he peered in one last chest, leaped up and yelled, my molars. With plaster and those teeth he found, George poured a sample mold that showed the dentist how to make false teeth George hoped would hold. The dentist took strong hippo tusk and carved a set to size, each tooth secured with screws of gold that lit up George's eyes. Can you guess the story's end? Those new teeth fit just right. And round the ballroom with his friends, George danced all through the night. Are you remembering? He liked to dance, right? The end. And here is a timeline with important events in George's life from his own letters. And it's in his own letters and journals where the author's got the information to write this wonderfully fun book about kind of how all his different teeth came out through the years because of the problems he had. And I hope it encourages you to keep brushing your teeth. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy George Washington's teeth. Don't forget to keep washing your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, do some reading, do some writing, help your family around the house, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.